this. I'm here with the Colbert. The ship was available for a rental at the beginning of the year and it was taken away for several months and now it's made its appearance in the Bureau. But in order to access that Bureau project, you need to pay 3,000 steel during this current update. Uh, you can see I'm a little short right now. I have 1485 steel. So uh, my calculations kind of uh, tell me I will make it to 3000 steel by the time the update is over with. But in any event, um, I do have the ship for a couple weeks as a community contributor. All the community contributors have the ship for a couple weeks to try out and create some videos. So that's basically what we're going to do here and to go over the ship setup. Aiming Systems Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2, Steering Gears Mod 3, and then the Main Battery Mod 3 to quicken the reload time even more, even though it does have a ridiculously short reload time to begin with, and we'll check that out really quick. Um, 16 kilometer range, 3.1 second reload time. Uh, traverse time is no problem at 7 seconds and HE shell damage is 2195 and a 9% chance of setting fire. Armor piercing shells, even though I haven't really used armor piercing that much, is 2600. Maneuverability is 2.6 seconds rudder shift. Maximum speed is 37 knots. 620 meter turning circle radius, which is pretty good. And uh, the loadout here kind of a big deal with four heels that is great and then three engine boost consumables that is also pretty good and it is an increase of 20 percent which is a little bit higher than the other engine boost consumables i do believe and it does pretty much cover the entire 15 minute match the consumable duration is 180 seconds and the uh, cooldown time is a little under two minutes at 111 seconds and as I said you have three of them so when you add all that up it is almost 15 minutes right there on the consumable duration and the reload time so anyway I do find the ship uh, quite a bit of fun and let's go check out the uh, the Colbert in a standard match and see what I'm talking about All right, we're in a standard match in Hotspot. I'm checking out the teams here. And what I don't realize at the beginning here is that Baltimore, the green shadow, he's going to have a heck of a game. And it's going to come down to either myself or that Baltimore there as to who's going to get the crack in toward the end here. So I'm not really aware of it at this point, but uh, that's how the game breaks down toward the end. It does turn out to be what I thought is a pretty good game. And it does highlight what I think are some of the best features about the Colbert and basically what I really enjoy about the ship when I'm playing it. For me, this is a break of the monotony of sitting behind islands and fire spamming and even, you know, sitting there in a battleship at long range and taking pot shots at people. So uh, for me, that's why I was looking forward to the Colbert because it is a lot of fun to go out here in the open water and to be able to have a ship that can be as maneuverable as the Colbert is to avoid incoming fire. Anybody who can do something like this with another cruiser that doesn't have the rudder shift time or the maneuverability, I think there's some people out there that are good enough at the game. Uh, they're able to do some pretty amazing things with less capable cruisers. Uh, God bless them, my hat's off to them. Uh, I'm not that good, and I'm looking forward to the Colbert here. So it is very maneuverable, and as I said, that is part of the enjoyment for me with the ship. So here I am using the island for cover a little bit here, and I'm sneaking up on B to see uh, who I can target. And there's this Japiev right there, and I'm being spotted, but I'm going to go ahead and take some shots at him anyway. At a three-second reload, these guys are really in big trouble with uh, the raining fire from, uh, from hell right here. Uh, we started a fire already right off the bat and that Vanguard is really gonna get um, really nailed here with all of this uh, HE coming down on them. 
and right away we are up to two fires and 15,000, 16,000 damage. We did destroy that ship right there. But here's a Chapiav, which looks to me like it should be uh, easy pickings, but I'm not uh, far enough ahead of the island. The island is still in the way right there, and that is really unfortunate. And so now as I'm backing out to get a better shot at him, uh, he disappears. So here, and then he reappears again, and I'm basically trying my attempt at some blind fires right here. I'm not moving around uh, my aiming indicator very much, and... I really think that this guy should be gone. I don't really understand why he is sitting there and I'm not able to uh, get an, another destroyed ship right there. Seems like I should have been able to, but um, spoiler alert, it doesn't work out that way. But we are up to five fires and 23,000, 24,000 and counting in damage right now. So this Chapiav is... Um, successfully staying hidden so good for him and okay we just uh, took the lead of the match barely and now I'm kind of uh, realizing that that is uh, a lost cause right there so I'm gonna come up over here and take a look at the Alaska and I am keeping in mind that that Republic over there uh, probably his guns are definitely, um, I'm within range of his guns. I think the Republic has 20 kilometer guns and it looked like that was 16 kilometer distance right there. So I'm not being spotted now, but as soon as I open up fire on the Alaska, I will be, um, I will be under attack. You can see that my, uh, speed boost is under cooldown and I did start the, uh, speed boost right at the beginning of the match and we will get the speed boost back right around the 10 minute mark or so. So the three speed boosts do cover the 15 minutes of a match and that is why I turn on the speed boost right away. Uh, the acceleration is kind of slow on the Colbert and that is probably the only negative thing about the ship. But in general, I don't find that to be uh, my biggest problem at all with the Colbert. The biggest problem is being targeted by uh, a gigantic number of a red team and you're not really aware from how many angles the incoming fire is coming from. But here's a Republic, he's uh, a good target actually. And there is a Gehring and there is another cruiser over there. So all of a sudden, this is a target rich environment. That is an Otago over there. So it's almost like I'm having a hard time trying to figure out who to target here and the gearing looks like uh, it is a easy mark for a destroyed ship because his health is so low but he disappeared and I'm going after the Otago to try to get a destroyed ship and it's really uh, solely because his health is so low so you can see they are taking uh, shots at me but I am for the most part successfully evading the shots I did hit the heal uh, boost right there, the consumable, to uh, kind of help me out. I don't want to get down too far, and that's why, because I just got blopped with a gigantic amount of damage right there. And so with the heal booster going, that kind of helped out a little bit. But the Republic is uh, not really all that maneuverable. He's taking shots at me, but as he's taking his shots, I am hitting the rudder to maneuver away from those shots and it looked like he only got me for 1500 or so damage but I am successfully evading most of this incoming fire and that is the fun part of the Colbert um, at least for me I find it uh, enjoyable like I said it's uh, a change from the monotony of the regular cruisers and battleship play of the game here I am uh, kind of at risk of getting uh, taken out here though so I've got to be a little bit more careful than I have been but it looks like we're gonna survive this for now 
the Republic looks like he's not going to be around much longer. And here are some incoming torpedoes. No problem evading the torpedoes with the Colbert. And here the Otago uh, shows up as a good target because of the fast rotating guns. And now we have the Republic over here that we're going to look to finish him off. He is under fire. We're up to 80,000 damage with a uh, second destroyed ship. So the first destroyed ship, I think uh, that guy got some massive damage just before my rounds hit him. And that's why I got that first destroyed ship. But here, uh, you know, these ships definitely have such little health left that I am looking to get a third destroyed ship. And um, I hate to say it, but I'm actually thinking about a Kraken at this point because there are so many ships out there with such little health that I think it won't be much of a problem to inflict even more health with the Colbert, but I just seem to be uh, missing a little short there. Um, I'm not aiming a, as far in front as I should. And there the uh, Otago is just sitting there. No problem evading him, and there the Baltimore does take out the Otago, and it's at this point I start realizing that the Baltimore might be racking up some uh, some kills of his own right there but this Amagi looks like it's going to be an easy destruction right here so this is a welcome sight and this is what I'm talking about about a lot of the red team has such low health that it seems like to get the last little bit in a destroyed ship wouldn't be much of a problem but there I successfully evaded those incoming shells and we are just nailing this guy. He doesn't have a chance. And he goes down. 86,000 damage. And there's the rune out there at 15 kilometers, basically. But he is at an odd angle, so it is hard to get a good beat on him, as it were. So it's just a rune and a destroyer, which I believe is a Garing. And the rune successfully goes behind that island, so... He is okay from me for now, but you can see from the left there that Baltimore is uh, kind of taking some shots at him, and he is getting some good hits. So I think he's a little bit better at aiming at off angles than I am. At least that's what it looks like to me. So we're just going to close up in here. We are in range of the rune. So I'm taking some essential uh, blind fires because I can't see his hull. So I don't really know which way he's angled and he is still angled out on me. So this is kind of rough for me. I'm kind of having a hard time. It looks like those are going to be some hits right there. We do get six hits. No fires. I was kind of hoping for some more fires here. But here, I'm hoping that this guy is broadside. He is. So I think I need to aim a little bit more in front. But now the island in front of me is starting to become an issue. So now I'm turning away. And there you can see the rudder shift is so great that um, the rune has no, no chance of hitting me, really. I mean, he nicks me there for 678 hit points. But for the most part, uh, he is not really going to get me. Hardly at all. Those were uh, ricochets, they look like. They didn't cause any damage. I didn't see any numbers pop up, but I am kind of hoping to get a kill here. Uh, there's two ships left. I don't really see where the gearing is at this point. And there's the gearing right there. He's firing out of the smoke. So now I know where the gearing is. And there he is right there. And he has got very low health. I'm actually assuming I'm going to get a fourth uh, destroyed ship here. But he turns out that the last second, I get four hits, but they barely uh, miss taking him out. And there are some more hits that miss taking him out. But the Baltimore does not miss, and he gets his fourth destroyed ship. So now the rune is basically on fumes right there. So if I can just barely nick the rune, I will get a fourth destroyed ship. And of course, the Baltimore takes care of the situation and closes the deal on that. So the battle is ended, and for me, that is a fun match. That's uh, why I like playing the Colbert. We ended up with 333,000 credits on 
89,000 battle performance damage on 254 main target hits, three destroyed ships, eight fires. So at a 9% chance of setting fire, that is every three seconds, and it does add up. So the Colbert does have kind of a good um, percentage of starting fires when you look at it that way. I did get a Dreadnought medal. That is awesome. Let's see how we did on the team result. All right, well, I finished in fourth place on my team with uh, three destroyed ships. The Baltimore player got 3,000 XP with a Kraken. Good game on the Baltimore player right there. And look at the Otago on the red team. 1941 XP, uh, got more XP than I did. So good game on the Otago player right there. So let's see how we did on the economy tab. All right, 123,000 credits by the time it was all said and done. So we did make some money there. And that really is why I like the Colbert, the combination of uh, seeing if you can make the red team miss and burning down the opponent. Uh, I find uh, thrilling and like I said, a change of pace. Is the Bureau Project worth unlocking in the Forge for 3,000 steel? Oh yeah, I absolutely believe that it is. This is the Jaguar and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.